as soon as I hit record, that's how it always goes. As soon as I hit record, some sort of machinery starts going. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. You see this glorious little chonk monster of a magnolia sitting in front of me? I am in love with this plant. So naturally, figured it should get its own video, its own dedicated video. This is the baby grand magnolia. Magnolia grandiflora, southern magnolia, but better if you have a small yard. If you have a small yard, maybe you have a large deck or something like that and no yard at all. This is an option for you. You could even grow this in a container if you wanted to. Got all the appeal here of a southern magnolia minus the size. Who doesn't love a southern magnolia? An evergreen magnolia in general, the large glossy oval shaped leaves with a nice brown underside and the large magnificent white flowers that have that fragrance to them, that spicy citrusy magnolia smell. They're awesome plants, fairly low fuss, pretty easy to grow for most people, depending on your climate. The problem with the Southern Magnolia and a lot of the other dwarf type Southern Magnolias is that they just get way too big. Think about the Bracken's Brown Beauty. Those are gonna go well over 30 feet. The Little Gem, 20 to 30 feet, depending on your climate. The K Paris, cross between the Bracken's Brown and the Little Gem. It's probably still gonna go 20 to 30. Not this one, the Baby Grand. Nice, small, and compact, maxing out around 10 by 10. I hear different reports on sizes from various places, but rarely do I hear anybody say that they're going to go over 10 feet, generally about seven feet wide, somewhere in there. This is a true dwarf magnolia, something you can squeeze into your landscape in a small spot without having to worry about something growing over your home or being too close to your foundation. It's 10 feet is still probably large enough where you should be taking into account your foundation. It's a magnolia after all, they have pretty strong roots. You could even keep this in a container for many, many, many years. Baby Grand was first introduced, I believe in 2010 or 11 is when I first started reading up and hearing about them. And I've been waiting to find one of these ever since. Finally, Monrovia, they've sold them for a while, but the nurseries around here, they didn't carry them. They couldn't get them in. You can buy plants online from Monrovia. I don't think that's gonna show. There's a wrapper around the tree there that tells you, like shopmonrovia.com. Can you see it? Maybe not. Well, you can place online orders and they will deliver the plant to your nearest Monrovia dealer, seller. Saw it on Monrovia's website and said, yep, add that to cart and have it shipped out to Sherwoods Forest here in St. Louis and picked it up. Isn't it just magnificent? Look at it. It's so little and cute and green. It has a nice size stem on it. Backing up to the origin. They're from Australia. They were discovered in Australia. I thought I had once read that it was maybe a cross between a just regular Southern Magnolia Grandiflora and a little gem and then other, you know, generations of it passed. I don't really, I can't find that article. So I don't think it's true. I, I don't know where I had read that. It's gone now, can't find it. But we do know that it was discovered in Australia. That's where it was found. And uh, hopefully the production on this plant is going to pick up and become more common. I often see people suggest this for edging and screening. That would be amazing at only 10 feet tall, just having big, beautiful bushes of these giant green glossy leaves and flowers low enough that they're still kind of near face level for smelling. It's a giant magnolia, huge Southern magnolia. It's great that they flower but they're all the way up there. They're way up above your head. So half the time you can't even smell them unless there's a huge show of flowers going on, which isn't always the case, right? Because the evergreen magnolias do tend to flower more sporadically. They set out a bunch of flowers at one time and then it's kind of sparse and in between. Every now and then you'll get a few flowers here and there, but it's not like with your deciduous magnolias where they just have a huge show in the springtime and can you imagine if those were as fragrant as the evergreen ones? That would be intense, maybe too intense. Might be a bit nauseating. But maxing out at 10 feet tall, those flowers are never gonna be up so high that you can't smell them. So if you had a whole hedge or a row of these things, all oh, those, those flowers, it would smell so good. More easy than a gardenia, that's for dang sure. Gardenias, and they can be picky about their climate. You need to live in the right place to really grow them outdoors and have them look like a really nice plant. There's specific climates and soils that need to jive well to keep those going. Magnolias, yeah, they prefer more acidic soil. You can treat them with a holly tone in the springtime by treat is, you know, amend your soil lightly, just throw a few handfuls down, mix that into surface of soil, and you're good. Do that once a year, so the plant gets some acidity around those roots, probably gonna be fine. Of course, there's some places with very high pH soils where maybe that won't be enough, but for a lot of the people in the US, which is where I am, 
it should be okay. Zone seven and up, and hopefully good for 6B because I'm right on the line of 6B, 7A, technically 7A, but we have a lot of 6A action in the winter time. If you do have it in a container, you wanna be up a zone or two, so maybe that's more of a zone eight type of thing. If you wanna keep this outdoors all winter in a pot, in the ground they'll do much better for you. I was just saying, you know, maybe you have a deck or something like that and you don't have a yard, you could have a little magnolia out there. Just like all the other magnolia grandiflores, these should be good into full sun. I would think though that the more dry, arid, and warm your climate, then probably the more afternoon shade to give them. They might appreciate that being a dwarf, they're closer to the ground. It means they can be more prone to some scorching if things are really hot and intense. That might be something to keep in mind. I don't really, I can't say that for sure. That's just anecdotal off of plant knowledge in my head. I could be wrong, I don't know. Something else I really like about this magnolia is from what I have heard and from the few things I've read, there's not a lot of information online about them is that their growth rate is more on the moderate to slow side. So it's not a fast grower, but it's not going to be one of these super dwarf plants where you're getting an inch out of them a year. Still going to take some patience to grow them, right? But nothing like a lot of the other cultivars of giant trees that have been dwarfed and you're waiting an eternity to get some size out of them. Now you still get a nice size plant. You don't have to wait forever and ever and ever for them to size up still not going to be something that's going to grow as fast as say if you were to throw some hollies in the ground or you know obviously things like your green giant arbs those are you know that you want some fast greening that's the way to go for something like that but that's a whole different vibe right not really looking for the same thing between those two different types of plants with a giant arb versus a magnolia you're getting something different there less patience that's always nice that's something i always appreciate the only negative thing i can say about this plant so far, i mean i don't have any experience growing it yet but just from what i've gathered over the years reading about it and waiting to get one of these into my plant collection would be that they are not easy to get a hold of monrovia does supply them i see some online retailers that sell them and when they show the pictures of them, it looks like they're usually in a Monrovia pot. So I don't know if they have an exclusivity situation going on with these plants, some kind of patent. I don't know. I think that these would be really cool plants to see around more frequently in people's gardens. Oh, and I know I already talked about the zone and everything, but the other nice thing about them being more compact and closer to the ground is that if you're in a marginal hardiness scenario like I am where I'm 7A-ish, and even though this is a zone seven plant, that was probably old zone seven, not the one that I live in, where sometimes it drops to negative 10 degrees just about every single winter. Well, that scenario I was talking about earlier was afternoon shade because of the extra heat and everything radiating back up at the plants. That also comes around to adding some more heat to the plant during the winter time. Not gonna be like some of the Bracken's Brown Beauties around here, or more so the little gems that I see in the St. Louis area where every few years we have a really bad freeze or maybe an ice storm and the plants will get killed back about 50 percent of the way it's always the tops of those trees that end up being damaged by those colds right the closer you get to the ground usually the less damage there is so maybe that'll make them more hardy i don't know it's, we'll find out together power washer goes off the second that i'm ready to wrap things up that's it okay i hope everybody's doing well and a great day great life everything's going beautifully for you comment down below what do you have to add about the plant do you have any experience growing them? Have you been able to be fortunate enough to see some mature specimens of these plants? Can you think of some nice applications for them? All the benefits to having a dwarfed magnolia, there's so many. My favorite is just that, well, it's not gonna take up a ton of space, so it's an option for some areas in the garden that aren't wide and open, but I would like a big evergreen. Why not do a magnolia? That's much more exciting than an arb, right? Glossy leaves, fragrant flowers, what's not to love? Nice, all right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing, bye-bye.